Hello there. I'm quite sure you have heard the saying, good things come in small packages. And since I'm here to teach you a chapter in biology, I think in that stream of science, this saying fits perfectly for cells. Now cells are the tiny units of life that have fascinated biologists for several centuries. Be it bones, the heart, the brain, or the muscles that we operate to move, everything has cells as their founding block. So, talking of good things in small packages, in this video, we will study about the smallest block in our bodies, that is the cell. Welcome to the first segment of the chapter on cell structure. A living organism has several body parts and organs such as limbs, eyes, nose, ears, heart, brain, liver, kidneys, etc. All these parts are made up of tissues such as muscles, bones and blood, which are in turn made up of smaller units called cells. So, plants and animals all are made up of cells. Some organisms are made up of a single cell and are called unicellular organisms, while many others are made up of a large number of cells and are called multicellular organisms. Amoeba, certain bacteria, would be examples of unicellular organisms. We humans are multicellular organisms. So, let us now learn about how the cell was discovered. And for that, let us time travel to the 17th century. Now, in the year 1665, British scientist Robert Hooke observed slices of cork under a simple magnifying device. Let me tell you, cork is a part of the bark of a tree. Now, Hooke took thin slices of cork and observed them under a microscope. And he noticed partition boxes or compartments in the cork slice. Something like this. Now, the pattern of these boxes resembled the pattern of a honeycomb. He also noticed that one box was separated from the other by a wall or a partition. And each box looked like a small room or a cavity. And thus, Hook coined the term cell for each box. Now, what Hook observed as boxes or cells in the cork were part of a dead tissue. And the magnifying device that Hook used back in the 17th century wasn't advanced enough to study cells of living organisms. These cells were observed much later with the discovery of improved microscopes. Surprisingly, very little was known about the cell for the next 150 years after Robert Hooke's observation. But once it caught the attention of the biologists and with the availability of improved microscopes having high magnification, there was tremendous progress in the field of cell structure. Today, we know a lot about building block of our body as well as its functions. A cell is the functional unit structure of a living organism filled with living material. Well, if I was to compare cells to a non-living object, its comparison with a brick would make perfect sense. As bricks are the building blocks of a tower or a building, similarly, Cells are basic structural units of a living organism. Now, if you look at the building around you, each one looks different. Different heights, various structures, different colors too, but they are all made up of bricks. Similarly, in the living world, organisms differ from one another, but their basic structural units remains the same, which are cells. Although cells in the living organisms are complex living structures, unlike non-living objects like bricks. Let me give you a very interesting example. You must have surely seen a hen's egg, right? But did you know that it is actually one single cell? And this is an exception in the world of cells. Except 
for the egg, no other cell can be seen by the unaided eye. Cells can only be seen under a magnifying device. Now, like I told you earlier, Robert Hooke observed the dead cells in a thin slice of cork under a very basic magnifying device. Many years later, advanced microscopes were invented, equipped with lenses of much higher power. Now, although these days only advanced microscopes are used to study cell structures, in the earlier days, a simple magnifying glass, also known as the hand lens or simple microscope, was used for basic purposes. Later came the compound microscope, which uses a pair of lenses and magnifies the object 50 times, 100 times, or even more than 200 times in some cases. Now, as you already know, all living organisms are made up of cells. And there is a variety of cells found in living organisms. And these cells acquire a shape and size as per the requirement of the organ or the body part where they are formed. Now, if you remember, I told you earlier that organisms can be unicellular or multicellular. Unicellular organisms have a single cell to carry out all their functions, such as ingestion, digestion, breathing, locomotion, excretions, etc. Examples would be amoeba and paramecium. On the other hand, multicellular organisms have groups of specialized cells forming different tissues. And these group of cells are responsible for carrying out specific sets of functions in multicellular organisms. Tissues, in turn, form organs. So a tree, a human, a cat, an elephant, all have billions and trillions of cells. But you will be surprised to know that all these organisms came to life as a single cell, which is the fertilized egg. The fertilized egg cell then multiplied and the number of cells increased as the organism grew and developed. Well, the beauty about cells is that they are the founding blocks of all living matter, however diverse this matter might be with respect to appearance, functions, structures, etc. But like I told you earlier, Cells acquire a shape depending upon the organ's requirement. So if you take a look at this, how would you define the shape of an organism like amoeba? You may say that the shape appears irregular. Let me tell you that amoeba has no definite shape, unlike other organisms. It keeps on changing its shape. These projections of varying lengths protruding out of its body that you can see are called pseudopodia, where pseudo means falls and podia means feet. Here is the interesting bit. These projections appear and disappear as the amoeba moves or feeds. But what is the advantage of changing shape in this manner? Well, I think we should break the segment here. I surely don't want you to load with too much information in one video. But when we meet next time, we will complete the chapter on cell structure. So join me then. Due to me, for more amazing video lectures, download the free app on Apple App Store or Google Play Store.